Hello there, in this quick tip video, we are going to discuss audio warping, which sounds kind of Star Trek-ish, but basically all it means is we can warp the timing of any audio track to make sure it's sitting and locked in time with other factors or other sections of our song. So in this track, I have a bass guitar right here. And if I double click on the bass guitar event, I can see my audio down below in the lower zone. So as you double click, so let's say I click out here, as I double click on an event, you'll see that this inspector's changing. So the inspector is now giving me the audio event settings. And in this audio warp drop down menu right here, we can turn on free warp. So if we turn that on, you'll notice straight away that we get this grid down the bottom. So my grid is basically set up to sixteenths. So I can see four subdivisions for each major beat. And I've got this interesting tool which has sort of two arrows on a horizontal line with a little clock symbol underneath it. Now, I can see that my timing is, well, a little bit out in a few sections here. So let's play from the start of the chorus. Now, bass guitar is an interesting one in terms of timing. Uh, first of all, because the bass transients are different to something like a snare drum or a hi-hat. I can show you how they sound right here. So let's click on snare. And you can see it's got a very formed peak at the top, whereas a bass guitar basically has, it's almost, it looks like a thud. It basically starts and then it, it starts sort of enveloping off towards the end or tapering off. So I could very quickly come in here and select that track and go up to, let's say, 1 8 and I could hit, make sure this is on, audio warp quantize, and I could quantize that. And you can see it's locked everything into time. But that may also have locked everything or locked our groove out of the time. So I'm just going to hit undo. I'm not saying not to use audio warp quantizing. It's really good. But in moments where, let's say, the actual bass player is sitting minutely behind the kick drum because that's his vibe, that's his groove, then you need to make sure that your quantize settings are correct before you quantize. And you can go up and change your quantize settings, you know, and move the ticks around and stuff like that up in the actual quantize settings. But we're not quantizing today, so let's ditch that. So I am going to double click on this once again over on the left hand side. We've got the free war button. So click on that. And now I can go through and I can start to create warp points so first of all i can see that there's a major point right there so that's where a note's played that's where another note's played that's where a note ends so sometimes it's good to mark where a note ends and starts so you don't need to do this for all of your notes you only need to do it at the start of a note at the end of the previous note and at the end or even before the start of the next note of the note that you're editing so let's say I want to move this guy right here in time. All I do now is simply pick up and drag it over. Too easy. Okay, let's say I want to move this guy in time. Pick up, move over. And once again, I can just place that exactly where I want it. So let's go to a section where I haven't created points. Let's say I want to move this guy. And I forget to put any other markers in. I pick up on it. Just watch what happens to everything behind and everything in front. Pick up, move. Oh look, it's moving everything. You don't want that because everything's gonna, you, you're gonna move this in time, but everything else is now out of time. So let's bring that back to where it was. So I'm gonna put a marker there and I'm gonna put a marker right here. And now you can see that these are my left and right goalposts. So nothing is gonna move outside of those areas. So once again, I can drop this guy in here, drop this guy in here, and I can just drag it over. The best thing about using these hit points is I can add correction without destroying the natural groove that the bass player is using. So it might just be one note that I'm listening to and I think, you know, that, that just needs a bit of correction. So this is probably a bit too far behind right here. So even then, I could come in here and I could pick up on this and just drag it closer. It doesn't need to sit perfectly in time, but I can just move it a little bit closer so that it's not standing out. 
Okay, so that is free warping. This technique is not just great for impacting the timing of the bass. Let's say we wanted a note to be held for a little bit longer. So this guy here, um, we could move him in time and we could pick up on the edge and we could drag it out or it's too long. We want a shorter bass note. We can move it to the left, shorten the note, move it to the right and lengthen the note. So this free warp basically makes us God. We can define you know, the, the shape and the timing of almost any audio note that's been played inside of Cubase, providing we can look at the waveform and we can start to edit that waveform down in the lower zone or in its own standalone editing window right there. Hey, thanks for taking the time to stop by and check out this video. Please subscribe to the Cubase YouTube channel and give us the thumbs up if you've learned something. Catch you soon.